Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy and this is the program on AADL TV where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. And the book that I am going to be talking about today is a graphic novel. It is called The Marble Queen, and it was written by Anna Kopp, and it was illustrated by Gabrielle Kari. The Marble Queen is a sapphic fantasy. It also has a little bit of political drama in it. It has a little magic in it. It is the story of these two queens, and it's set in this Elizabethan inspired kingdom. Princess Amelia lives in a kingdom called Marion and because of pirates that have been marauding and stealing all the resources from that kingdom they are now facing financial ruin. So in order to save her country Amelia agrees to marry the ruler of a nearby country, Iliad. Nobody really knows much about it. Nobody's allowed in it. It's very closed off and known for its resources is known for doing well, but it really keeps that very guarded. This young, handsome prince comes from Iliad, and Amelia assumes that's the ruler that is there to woo her and bring her back to Iliad to wed her. And she is surprised to learn when she gets there that she's actually betrothed not to this prince because he's already married, but to his sister, Queen Solera. From this point on, the story unfolds. Amelia isn't sure how she feels about this because she wasn't told the truth up front. She also has a lot of anxiety about leaving behind her home country and coming to this place where she can't really have contact with the people that she grew up in, the people that she knows and her family, and really facing being married to a ruler of this new kingdom. There's also a lot of weight on her shoulders because this is the act that is going to save the country. Now there is support for Marion from Iliad and that helps them to get back on their feet. One of the things I really loved about this graphic novel was the way that the anxiety was explored and the way that it was portrayed. Amelia struggles with these dark spiraling thoughts that come on all of a sudden. It's shown with creeping vines and tendrils of fog that come down and sort of sweep her up. It's visually stunning but it also really imparts this sense of not only feeling anxious but how strong it is because it completely engulfs her. When it happens it's really just kind of like this falling into this state that she's powerless against. And that was a challenge for Amelia throughout the entire book. Eventually she and Solera get to know each other. They sort of open up to each other and you find out that Queen Solera has also had something very painful happened to her in her past. And Queen Slayer is also struggling with the fact of ruling a country and whether or not that's something that she wants to do. Her brother is not really the type of person who wants to do that at all. He's more into having fun and he's very supportive of his sister and he's very close with his sister and he's supportive of Amelia. And Amelia gets to know his wife well and all of these connections help her to start feeling like she belongs in this place. There's this political drama because there is a war that is looming that both the kingdom of Marion and the kingdom of Iliad will be involved in. And that sort of starts to creep in on the edges of this story. And what you learn is that Celera is actually an incredible fighter and warrior. And those scenes, these fight scenes, are also really vividly rendered and dynamic and it really gives you the sense of the action. The illustrations in general in this book do a great job at being aptly expressive for the scenes that they are portraying and for the feelings and the emotions. So both of these women are coming to terms with different things in their lives. They're on this path of self-discovery. For Amelia, she's really coming to terms with her queerness and that helps her understand interactions she's had in her past and her reluctance to find that prince to get married to. For Celera, she is coming to terms with her royalty and her role as a leader and whether or not that's something that she wants to take on. Another facet of this book that I really enjoyed was how supportive these two are of each other. They are also fighting this force within Iliad. This woman who comes back who used to have a relationship, a complicated relationship with Celera, and 
there's a mysterious element to it. You're not sure how that is going to unfold throughout or what role that woman really plays. But when it comes down to it, Amelia and Solera really form a tight bond and they really fall in love. And through that, they just become so supportive of helping each other on their different paths to self-discovery. I read an interview where the author, Anna Cop talked about her inspiration for writing this story and what it was that she wanted to impart. And she said, for me personally, I wanted to write a story that reflected my experiences of being an immigrant in a place I didn't know I could ever belong to. A queer girl who didn't know queerness existed until I was in a place that didn't ban it. And as someone with severe physical anxiety symptoms, who cried the first time I felt the relief that medication brought me. Overcoming all these things made me a little more whole, and I wanted to make the main theme of the book be that you're never really alone and that it's okay to ask for help. And she says, I wrote The Marble Queen for the 13-year-old me who just realized she was queer and had only a few scraps of media where I could feel seen. We're incredibly lucky to have so many amazing queer books out in the world nowadays, but this one is for the anxious queer girls who want to be princesses too. And I really liked that she said that. I feel that everything that she mentioned there definitely comes through in this book and really nicely encapsulates what the book is about. The piece of anxiety is really well portrayed in part because it's not something that is miraculously fixed. And instead of having it be something that goes away, it is something that Amelia has to learn how to accept this part of herself and understand how she's going to live with that and how she's going to get help for that. It's a realistic representation of mental health in this way that she's not trying to be fixed, but she's trying to figure out how her world can become a more welcoming place for her. It's not a very long book and so I don't want to give away very much of the details of the plot. There is definitely intrigue, there's definitely fighting, there's romance, there's drama, there's humor. The Prince of Iliad is a pretty funny character and there are some twists and turns that are unexpected. Ultimately what it shows you is these two women who work together to become really strong through their support of one another and through their love for one another. I really enjoyed this graphic novel, both the illustrations and the writing, and I recommend that you read The Marble Queen, written by Anna Kopp and illustrated by Gabrielle Carey. Thank you for joining me.